Hello there, fellow adventurer. Would you mind if I took that seat next to you? Ah, much obliged. So, how are you on this fine winter evening? That is most splendid to hear. I feel like many too many people on this train are old and drab and weary and not full of life anymore. You're a nice change. <laughs> I'm glad I found you. You know, I feel like I was content staring at the snow-capped mountains for the first few hours of the journey, but I must admit it gets awfully dreadful not having someone to talk to. My travel companion is sick and was unable to come with me on the journey, so thank the gods that you are here. Might I inquire, where did you come about such magnificent garments? Ah, the seamstresses of Dullamore. I'd expect nothing less from them. <laughs> Might I say, they do suit your nature quite nicely. I had a friend of Dullamore long, long ago. Perhaps if we were still acquainted, I wouldn't look as disheveled as I am now. Further, where exactly are you headed? This is quite a long train journey, and most normal folk would shy away from this for the length alone. Interesting. Hogsworth, you say. Are you an academic? I should have assumed as much from your intelligent stature and general demeanor, but I must say, it is an honor to meet someone with such a lofty destination. I myself have always dreamed of being invited to Cogsworth, but alas, I am not smart enough. Personally, I'm headed to Firebrand. I've heard their smiths are best in class, and I'm wondering if they can help me fashion the metals I will need for my latest project. Oh, it, it's stupid. You, you wouldn't want to see it. it. It'd probably hurt you in some way. Are you entirely certain? Uh, I wouldn't care to hurt such a fair maiden as yourself. Well, if you insist. So, let me put you in the right perspective. You're at home, and you want a cup of tea, but you don't want to set the coals and prepare the kettle and do all these menial tasks that take way too long. You want your tea, and you want it now. What do you do? Might I present the Teomatic 5000? <laughs> yes, fashioned out of those just greatest brass, the most precise cogs available. May I demonstrate? Splendid. So, you see, you adjust this knob here, depending on how much tea you would like produced, and you 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 pour the water in here. Have to open this <clears throat> this latch here, and then put the tea bags, and then you set it on its side like this. I, it's not designed to be like that, but there's a pesky leak, and I haven't figured out where exactly it's coming from. But putting on its side like this seems to mitigate that. And once you have all that accomplished, you press this button here. And voila, you have your tea. <laughs> the machine may have been a little destroyed in the process, and you might say that, you know, the whole process of getting the machine ready and Having to repair it every time it breaks is arguably longer than having to set the coals and prepare the kettle and whatnot. But I say, 
once I have acquired the metal from Firebrand, I'll be able to make it so when the water expands with the heat, it does not break through the brash. Uh, I think if they can prepare me an alloy of perhaps copper and brass, uh, it'll be able to withstand those pressures. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, however. I'm entirely self-taught and not very proficient, if all things are considered. And, um, no, I, I wouldn't touch that. <laughs> the tea is still boiling and, um, tastes of coins. It is quite pitiful in its current state. That I can't admit. In return for your good sport and <laughs> admittedly kind reaction to my most embarrassing display, might I offer one of the two histories that my travel companion's mother had prepared for me? We're not the most affluent, you see, so we prepare our portions ahead of time to pay the exorbitant prices for the meal cart is far beyond what we're willing to pay, especially with the constant travel we're doing. Oh, of what flavor? It is chocolate and something special. His mother would never tell me, so I am yet to know what exactly is in these. I do, however, promise that they are most delectable. Shall we eat accordingly? See, what did I say? Most delectable. I'll make sure to pass those kind words along. I'm sure his mother would be most grateful to hear such high praise. Say, when you're finished with that, would you care to join me on some unnamed shenanigans? I promise I will divulge more information if you agree. All right, very good. So, there's a little known secret about these trains that you mustn't stay in your own quarters. There are access windows in every cart. And if you're clever, you can access them, go further up to the train to get to the first class cabins, find an empty cart and enter it. <laughs> I know, it is risky and we will have to be shambling on top of the carts and jump between each but with winds as high as these none of the guards dare go up there and I say if you'd be so daring it'd be quite the adventure. Are you for certain? I can in no way guarantee your safety on this. It is high risk, high reward. High risk in that we may perish on this adventure, and high reward in that if we succeed, we will have access to unlimited food in the first class cart and the most amazing beds you've ever slept on. Admittedly, I only did this once on an entirely empty train that wasn't moving. We were at a station and I got caught eventually and ever since then I've been planning in my head how this would be accomplished. You see, I came prepared. The first question you might have is what will we do about the slick roofs? All the snow has no doubt got the metal very slippery, and with one misstep, we would be off the side and dead in the cold snow around us. Might I present uh, <laughs> these things I've been working on? I haven't quite given it a name yet, but more or less they have rubber on the bottom that has been scored to make very good traction. You'll fasten it to the bottom of your shoes. And from what limited tested I've done, they 
should keep you from slipping. Now, how will we keep ourselves from being pushed away by the wind? Or if we do, secure to the cart? Again, I have a solution. It is a little bit impromptu, you could say. And it's kind of the entire reason I approached you in the first place. It requires two people to be harnessed together so that if one falls, the other can fall in the other direction and they will balance each other out and can climb back to the top. You see, this would be useless if I was alone because if I fell, no one would be falling on the other side and I'd fall off the train. Okay. You're in. Glad I say I, I am a fair bit surprised. Okay, here. Fashion these to your shoes. To put on this harness. Give me a minute to get the, uh, the hatch on our cart opened. Okay, there we go. I'll hoist you up and follow right after you. Don't get too far ahead. Again, there's only so much tether between us. Got it? Okay, here you go. One, two, three, up. <sighs> what did I say? Right behind you. Now stay low and let's advance slowly. Again, any misstep and we're done for. Good. Okay. Now about we've reached the edge of our cart. You're going to have to jump. I'll stay as far as I can close to your cart so that when you jump, the tether will not pull back on you. You've got this. Take a running start and jump. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to make it, but you did. Gosh darn it. I'm coming. Just give me a second. All right, we did it. Now just one more cart, and we're on top of the first class cabin. Okay. Watch it. There's a bit of slick over there. Try to steer clear. Good. You're doing great. All right. And again, jump. I'll go first this time. Okay, now you. <laughs> By the gods, we've made it this far. Okay. Let me jimmy this. And we're in. You go down first, and then I'll follow. <laughs> we've done it, my friend. When I hailed you as adventurer, I wasn't expecting such a fiery spirit within you. Hand me one of those licorice sticks, if you will. <laughs> the sweet sensation of victory. Well, after all that nonsense, I'd say we have a well-deserved rest. I'll take this bed, and you can take that one. And thank you, adventurer. You truly are a special type of person. Now, nearing the end of the journey, we will have to depart from this cabin in quite a similar method. And I have a handy-dandy time-keeping device invention prepared just for that. So we will know exactly when we must depart. But until then, I think I'm going to get some shut-eye. Good night for now, adventurer. <laughs>